George, we're on the Indros again this week. Where are we at? We're in Northern Tama County. Northern Tama County. Uh, what are the few things that we're concerned with uh, uh, as we go forward here for the next couple weeks? Well, I think everybody right now is looking at uh, how are, how's the corn coming up? Is the stand good enough? You know, get over all those early season worries about whether they've got to replant anything. For as cold as the month of April started out this year, uh, here in southeast Iowa, we gained significant heat in the last week of April and the first part of May. So much so that uh, a lot of the last planted corn only took a, just a tad over a week to come out of the ground. And stands, as the mo for the most part, look pretty good. But it's still important for growers to go back, uh, do some digging, and, and check and see what's actually there. Uh, looking for, for gaps in stand and, and also looking at seedling depth. This year, soils in, in our area have worked up very mellow. Uh, there's a lot of fluffy seed beds that got planted into this year. So it's important to pay attention to that seed depth as, a, as growers go back and evaluate that stand. Uh, although you may we may have thought we were planting at an inch and a half or two inches as a few of the rains have come through and settled that soil back down, it may not be a little different in a little different spot than what growers were anticipating. Although much of southeast Iowa still remains in a drought type of pattern, we are catching some rain in a few places we've actually had some significant downpours. So much so that we've washed the seed furrow out on some side hills in those areas. It's important when evaluating those stands is to note the gaps in the stand, but also dig the plants that are there up and look at where the seed is located. Seed that's located less than an inch and a quarter from the soil surface could have root issues later in the season. So it's important to take note of the, the gaps in the stand, but it's also important to look at the, the health of the stand that remains. If a grower is concerned about stand health, uh, what are the few things that they should be taking a look at? And probably the, the key things to be looking at right now when you go out there uh, is that coleoptile. If it's not up, is that coleoptile still intact or is it uh, starting to break the leaves below the ground? So you'd look for leafing out, look for the health of the, of the mesocotyl. Um, you know, you want it to be nice and white like this is, or a light yellow. You don't want it to be brown. That would indicate some pythium. And then look at the condition of the seed. The seed on most things that I've looked at, even the ones that aren't up, the seed is still firm. If that seed is mushy, you're seeing some browning on the roots or, the, or on the, the shoot, then you might have some disease issues, but as long as everything is still firm and in intact, um, if it's starting to break the coleoptiles and it's not quite through the soil, pull out the rotary hoe. Anytime you evaluate a field of corn, there's two tools you want to have with you. One is a hand trowel and the other is a tape measure. Using the tape measure, you need to get a good handle on the overall population of the field. That means taking uh, multiple populations or taking multiple population counts across that field, concentrating not on solely on the good spots and not solely on the bad spots, but in the, the, the whole field in general. Once you've done that, you can take a step back and look at the overall field health. Small gaps in the row can sometimes be over be compensated by the hybrid's ability to uh, exhibit ear flex or put on a bigger ear during the season. Big gaps in the field are generally going to be just plain areas of yield loss. Uh, will have to be considered when uh, evaluating the stand as, as, as a whole. The next step is to pull out the hand trowel and do some digging and, and try to get a, uh, an assessment of what happened uh, to cause a reduction in stand. And there's many things that can cause that reduction. Um, imbibition of chilling, uh, just cold wet weather, uh, saturated soils, um, crusting. Uh, there's just a multitude of things, that, multitude of things that could happen, and that's why you need to need to dig and find out, or do some digging and find out, because that's going to help you make a better management decision uh, the next time around. Once you've uh, identified uh, what your overall uh, remaining population is, and you identified what may have occurred to reduce that stand, the next uh, thing you really need to take a look at is overall stand health of the re of the remaining stand. Uh, looking at, at the, the plant health of the plants that are there and, and the evenness of the stand. The more uneven the stand is, the more you see delay, delayed emergence from plant to plant, the more yield is affected of the remaining stand. That needs to be a consideration when you're evaluating keeping a uh, stand or, or possibly replanting it. Once you've evaluated the corn 
uh, stand. Uh, there's multiple resources on online you may want to consult, including some good information on AgAnytime.com. Uh, generally, when you look at the information, they're going to give a, you're going to see a chart that'll give you some uh, numbers for maximum uh, yield potential percentage uh, for a given population at a given planting date. Uh, great information, but always rem remember that those numbers are based on a healthy, evenly spaced stand. In other words, they're going to the chart shows you your best case scenario as far as maximum yield. Any uh, plant health concerns with the remaining stand, any unevenness in the stand, any gaps in the field will have to come off of that number that's on the chart.